Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about memory interleaving concept in computer organization and architecture. It is one of the important concept in computer organization and architecture. Please observe carefully. First of all, we have to know the reason for developing memory interleaving concept. After that, we can go for actual concept. So this is main memory. In that main memory, there are two memory locations. The first one is 2000. The second one is 3000. We have to perform two operations on the main memory. The first one is read operation. The second one is write operation. In read operation, we want to read the data from this memory location 2000. In that memory location, the data value is 40. By using the write operation, we want to write the data 75 in this memory location that is 3000. So, we have to perform two operations on the main memory. But both operations cannot be done at the same time. Okay. Among these two operations, so we have to perform one operation. After that, after completing the first operation, we are performing another operation. So both operations cannot be performed at the same time because here the main memory is a single main memory. It accepts only one request, either read request or a write request. Both requests cannot be accepted at the same time. This is the limitation here. To overcome that limitation, we are using a concept called memory interleaving concept. In memory interleaving organization, a single large memory is divided into equal sized blocks called as memory modules. These memory modules are equal in size. We have to make any number of memory modules based on our system requirement. Okay, for our convenience, a single large memory is divided into four memory modules. Memory module 1, memory module 2, memory module 3 and memory module 4. The uniqueness of memory interleaving organization is assignment of two specific registers for each and every memory module. The first one is AR register. The second one is DR register. AR register stands for address register. DR register stands for data register. The address register can receive the data from the address bus which is common to all the memory modules. Here the address bus is common to four memory modules. Okay. Address register can receive the data only from the address bus which is connected to all the memory modules. Here, address register contains only unidirectional because it receives the data from the address bus only which is common to all the memory modules. Next one. The data register has the data register receives the data from the data bus which is connected to all the memory modules and also it can also send the data to the data bus also because of the reason the data register has bidirectional communication with the data bus. From the data bus, it can receive the data. To the data bus, 
it can also send the data so that the bidirectional communication between the data register and the data bus next one the data register can also receive the data memory module 1 or memory module 2 or memory module 3 or memory module 4 and also it can send the data to the corresponding memory module so that the bidirectional communication between the data register and memory modules okay so the data register can receive the data and also send the data to the data bus so that there is a bidirectional communication between the data register and the data bus second one is the data register can receive the data from the memory module and also send the data to the corresponding memory module so that there is a bidirectional communication between the data register and the memory modules okay here address register contains a unidirectional communication between the address bus and the address register whereas data register contains bidirectional communication between the data bus and the data register next the address register can contain a unidirectional communication between the address register and the memory modules whereas data register contains the bidirectional communication between the data register and the memory modules okay so by observing this diagram so address register has the unidirectional communication between the address bus and the address register and also address register and memory module whereas data register contains the bidirectional communication between the data register and the data bus and also memory module and data register next the address register can receive the address from the address bus so in that address for example so 0010 is there this is the address that is received by the address register from the address bus the last two bits specifies the memory module okay here the last two bits are uh, one zero okay so the first memory module one is zero zero memory module two is zero one memory module three is one zero memory module four is one one okay so the last two that means least significant two bits represents the memory module here the last two significant bits is 10 so it represents the memory module 3 the address register can receive the address from the address bus in that address the last two significant bits represents the memory module okay here the last two significants are significant bits are 10 so that it represents the memory module 3 the remaining bits the remaining bits represents the a specific memory location in this memory module okay so once again i am telling the address register can receive the data from the address bus this is the address that is received by the address register from the address bus the last two significant bits represents the memory module here the last two significant bits are 10 so here it represents the memory module 3 the remaining bits the remaining bits represents the it points to a specific memory location in the memory module 3 okay in this way we are identifying which memory module is in activity.
Okay. To know that which memory module is in activity, so the address register can receive the address from the address bus. In that address, the last two significant bits represents the memory module. Here, 1, 0 is the last two bits in the address that is received by the address register. It represents memory module 3. The remaining bits in this address points to a specific memory location in the memory module 3. So, in this way, we have to identify which memory module which memory module has to perform either read operation or a write operation. Okay. One important advantage of memory interleaving concept is suppose one memory module is involved in activity either read operation or in write operation it will not affect the processing of other memory modules. Suppose this memory module is involved in either read operation or a write operation. It will not affect the remaining memory module 1, memory module 2 and memory module 4. It will not affect the processing of remaining other memory modules. So, this is the main advantage of memory interleaving concept. Among the four memory modules, if any memory module is involved in the operation of either read operation or a write operation, it will not affect the processing of other memory modules so that the performance of the system is improved. Okay. Suppose this memory module performing the read operation. Okay. Maybe this memory among these three remaining memory modules, any, any memory module we have to perform the write operation. So that uh, four operations can be performed at the same time four operation can be performed at the same time. So, the, this limitation can be overcome in this memory interleaving organization. Okay. What is the main advantage of memory interleaving organization? So, it will improve the performance. It will improve the performance of the system. So, more than one operation can be performed at the same time, either read operation or a write operations. Second one is bandwidth is also increased. Okay, so these are the main two advantage of memory interleaving organization. So, this is the description about memory interleaving organization. So, thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates and uh, told them please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divvela Srinivasarao. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will clarify your doubts. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.